Human in the ash tree Robin's looking for something sweet
these precious hours I keep you close Of all the nights in recent memory There were so many you were far from me And I just hurt my heart Keeping lonely time Wishing yours was there to echo mine. If the papers would have read old news, they'd say I'm still in love with you. Let the years go by, it remains the same. What we've got is gold And what it's worth won't change Well, I fear I turned you upside down When I tore you from your hometown Just to make you at home for me Keep this fire alive Tirelessly But if your patience ever reached an end Tell me, baby, what would I do then? Say that it's alright To ease my mind Though you told me so a thousand times If the papers would have print all the news They'd say I'm Hi everybody Hey Welcome to another Wednesday evening. I'm Alice Howe. And I'm Freebo, and we're really happy to be here. And Alice is back here in California. We're I together again. Yep. We get to play music together. We get to hang. And uh, we get to welcome uh, an incredible guest, my old buddy Leland Sklar, wonderful uh, bass player and, and, and phenomenal human being. And, really uh, looking forward to tonight's show. And thank you guys for being here. Thank you to our radio hosts, 103.7 LP, Asheville, North Carolina, WPVM, and the voice of Asheville. We are so glad to be on the air with you. If you're listening on the radio, thanks for being with us. If you're listening on Facebook or YouTube Live and you're watching along, please let us know in the chat that you're here. We'd love to see your comments and we are watching them come in throughout the show and please hit that share button if you're watching on Facebook it helps more folks find the show tonight so welcome I'm gonna start off with a song yeah let's play some music for the folks yeah traveling soul with a brand new set of wheels they ask me how I do it I said I like the way it feels this is the life I chose seeking truth along this road it's a bitter pill to swallow country that you love has a history of violence that is written out in blood i am a traveling soul seeking truth along this road it's the same old two lane highway and the same old moon above a world contradictions and the longing to be loved i am a traveling soul seeking truth along this road well it's easy to be running but so hard to stay behind i have to keep in motion to ease my worried mind 
a traveling soul seeking truth along this road well the towns that pass my windows they all start to look the same overrun by corporate greed disguised as household names i am a traveling soul Thank you all. So nice to see your comments coming in. Yes. Well, I had a great visit in Boston with my family, but it's really nice to be back here with Freebo playing some music together again. Feels good. It sure does. That song is called Travel and Soul, and it's one of mine, a new one that's going to be on the new record that we're recording in Muscle Shoals next month. So, in very fact, we recorded about that. that already last we did time we're there, that song. Right just before COVID. And, uh, I miss the drums. I mean, I'm trying to, and uh, Lee, when you come in, you, you can imagine her just such, such a difference. Obviously we play with drums. Let's but bring him I, in. Hey, let's bring him. Speaking in. of the devil. Leland Sklar, one of the great human beings and not a bad bass player either. <laughs> hey Lee. <laughs> that sounded great. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Really a cool tune. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, it's really happy to a have treat you. to have you. You've been on our list for a while. We finally got you. You know, Lee, I'm just thinking it uh, quite a coincidence that you and I both have on blue t-shirts. I know. I was thinking the same thing. It's like well, I was jealous, I got so call. I changed I changed to blue because I wanted to match you. Guys. And pants. Let me ask you this. Did, did you ever did you ever play in a band back in the day where you had to wear the band uniform? Oh, I, absolutely. I, I had a blue velour, I had a gold jacket. Um, all, all those things, you know, oh I actually gosh. kind of dug it, you know, when we had our band uniforms and we would do steps while we were playing and wow. we had, we had it down, you know, and then we got old and infirmed and nobody does it anymore. But, <laughs> what was the name of that band? you remember the name of that band? Um, there was a couple of them. One of them was the El Dorados. Um, another one was the Brimstones. Actually, the Brimstones, I was in that band in 1966 with Dan Dugmore. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I Dan, like Dan and I go back almost farther than anybody I know in this business. Mm -hmm. and, uh, well, um, and that's saying something, considering that you've been in this business for a very long time. When and... they invented dirt, I was in this business. <laughs> I feel just so honored to be in the company of two of the most iconic bass players that I know. 
but no. also that anybody knows. No. Well, I to, say, I mean, to, become, to become iconic, all you have to do is get old and just be half decent, right? You yeah, guys, it's it's true. It's I I wanted to ask both of you, but maybe start with Leland. Start with I Lee, mean, yeah. when when you've been doing this for fifty years, I mean, what I just you've obviously learned so much along the way and here you are today and you've played on thousands of recordings and I guess just what, where, what do you think about your life? Do you reflect on your career? What, what do you, what are your thoughts at this point, 50 years in, um, um, you know, what, what is it like to be an icon? I know that's a big question, but no, it's you just daikon. Say, it's daikon. <laughs> it's, it's just, um, it's, it's like when people say legend, I go, no, legume. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's no, I mean, you know, what, I, what is that like to be called that all the time? I mean, what, tell us about that. Well, no, I, you know, I never really thought about any of this. I mean, the only time I've really had to address this was, uh, during the pandemic, when I started this YouTube channel that I ended up doing by accident. And during the course of this, I'm having to visit my career on a daily basis. But before all of this, all I ever thought about was what am I doing today and what am I doing tomorrow? I never really kind of looked back on it. And uh, the only time I ever really thought about it was doing interviews and things like that. I mean, I, I you know, I, I don't dis, you know, I... I I recognize my history and I, and I know what I've I've done, but it's really not I don't dwell on it. I really look forward to uh, being a viable working musician every day. So uh, but the, this YouTube channel kind of made me confront it uh, head on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, Leah, I, I can totally relate to that. I mean, it is nice when when people remember you for something you did in the past and Especially when you listen to it and you go, hmm, that wasn't bad. I might do something a little differently now. But yeah, uh, it, it and it really it's nice to have the history, but you know, ultimately it really is about the present, you know, and the future and and playing music and and not just being relevant for the sake of being relevant, but because we enjoy so much, you know, what we do. Uh, Absolutely. So I, I can totally relate to that. And people and and I, I I'm sure like you, I, I don't resist talking about the past, you know, and no. I appreciate that. But I think it's really important for anybody listening it, you know, that that's not really what it's about. You know, yeah. you, you, you're, you're creating the present, you're creating what's going to be your past yeah. anyway. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. I, I think you're absolutely right uh, in, in that where, you know, it, 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 like talking to you guys and you're heading off to Muscle Shoals to make new music. That's really what it's all about. The, yeah. What we've done in the past is it's there for posterity, right. um, but it's certainly not anything that uh, you know I, I give tremendous thought to. I, I recognize it, but I'm really excited about the things that are starting to get in the book now after a year of plus of very little yeah, yeah. Uh, plan A and living in a world of plan B. Um, Plan A starting to rear its head again, and I, I'm just yeah. trying to get on the road and just and yeah. start playing music for people again. Well, yes. speaking of uh, the two things I can think of, if you would speak to first of all, maybe speak uh, to, to the book that you put together during the pandemic, and also maybe speak to uh, the new band that you're in the immediate family. Uh, my old friend Steve Postel, you know, the kind of lead singer and just some some iconic players in that. Would you? Talk Iconic. about both There's those that things word a little again. bit. I well, they are. They I know really it's are. true. <laughs> well, let's let's talk about the band first. Um, okay. A couple of years ago, Danny Korchmar, who I've been with since 1970 with the original James Taylor band, along with Russ Kunkel, um, he got a, had a record deal in, in Japan. Actually, I'm sitting with my camera like this so we can see. <laughs> the, it's actually, I'm not trying to deny the fact that I don't have hair on top. <laughs> <laughs> Wanted you to it's know a good that. cover, though. <laughs> Normally, I would have my glasses on here, but when I'm sitting this close to the screen, it's easier to see without them. Um, but a few years ago, Cooch got a record deal in Japan uh, with a, a label called Vivid Records. And when it came time to fulfilling his record deal, he, uh, on a whim, called uh, the guys to see if we were around, which he was expecting that we probably weren't, because normally we would have been on the road but it just he, he called and it was a perfect lull in our schedule so russ and i 
went in with him. And at that point, he had hooked up with Steve Postel when Cooch moved back to Los Angeles from Connecticut. Um, he and Steve met and started doing pre-production for his album together. And um, so we went in the studio uh, with uh, Cooch and, and Steve and myself and Russ down in Jackson Brown's studio. And um, he wanted Waddy, a Wachtel, to also be involved, but Waddy was out with Stevie Nicks, but he was going to be here for the last day of recording. So we did that, and when it came time to, you know, title the album, uh, Cooch just said, well, you guys are like my immediate family. So it became Danny Korchmar and the immediate family for the Japanese release. Once that was fulfilled and we knew this was going to become something more than that one project, uh, we just made it the immediate family because we really are. I mean, for the most part, we've been playing together uh, outside of Steve. We've been playing together for 50 plus years. Mm -hmm. Never had an argument, never had a fight, never had any kind of issues like you hear of all these bands that hate so beautiful right. <laughs> and it's really isn't a, a family so um we ended up with a, a new album uh we signed with a label called quarto valley records out here in los angeles and um we finished a new album before the pandemic and then all of a sudden you know everything went down the toilet as far as you know moving product forward and all that um, our album, we're finally releasing it on August 27th. Um, it is going to be our release with that. And then we're going to be hitting the road at the end of October. And uh, and we just went in the studio last week uh, back at Jackson's again with Nico Bolas engineering. And and we've got 10 new tracks beyond oh my that. Gosh. Then we're going to go back in again. So we'll have an album finished. Beyond that, there was the great movie, The Wrecking Crew, that Denny Tedesco yeah. did, you yeah. know, an homage to his father, uh, Tommy Tedesco. Well, he's making a documentary film about us now. And um, that is yeah. about four fifths finished. I think they're in editing now. And we're Fantastic. hopefully, when that comes out, maybe the new stuff that we're cutting will coincide with the release of the uh, documentary film. So there's lots of stuff going on with the band and uh, yeah. we're just so kind of chomping at the bit to hit the road and, and go out and play this new music because nobody's heard any of the new stuff. And um, so it's exciting, you know, I'm a bunch of, we're like a bunch of kids in a candy store with all this. It's, you know, I, I, I always feel that even after 50 years, I close my eyes and it's still that first day. You know, this yeah. has never gotten, I'm sure for you guys, it's the same way. It, if you got tired of doing this, you should quit. Yeah, I agree. This I've is heard that from so many. Well, I love speaking with artists of your generation and like learning what you guys have been through and, and hearing your stories. And also I, I get that sense from pretty much everybody, like including Will McFarlane. I remember him saying, he's like, he, I wake up and I'm like, I still get to do this. Yep. And it's like, there's that joy that that is what keeps you going. And yeah, you're in the moment with it and you're loving it. And it's just so cool that you guys found each other again after all that time and that the timing was right because it's all always about the timing being right yeah. and you were off the road and you could come together and do that. So yeah, it was a perfect happy storm for you guys. That's so it was great. A little perfect storm. Yeah. But but may, may I may I offer a prayer that the peace continues because up to this point, you've never really been a band. You've been kind of playing behind somebody else. Now you're a real band. Well, so, you know, <laughs> Russ and Cooch and I and Craig Durge had the section uh, right. back in the 70s. So we, we guys do gigs as, as a band. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we've we've toured. I mean, before the pandemic, we were doing gigs. The last gig last year I, we, I actually played was with the band. We did a thing called the Rock Legends Cruise. That was one of those cruise ships that went from Fort Lauderdale yeah. to Grand Cayman. And uh we went on and we were supposed to be back this past February and then it got canceled. So we're going out next February on it again. Uh, but that was the last live gig um, that I played last year was was with the, the band. I, I don't anticipate any issues with the group. I mean, we really have spent so many years. I mean, Russ and I have yeah. toured for ages with Lyle Lovett yeah. and you know, different people and um, uh, yeah, I, I don't anticipate any problems with it. And if there is, I'll just beat the crap out of them and uh, move on. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I was actually half joking about that. I mean, at this point, 
you know, it, it's, I mean, you choose your battles and, and it's not about being right. You know, it's, a, the, the, it's about serving the song, you know, well, and I think it, when, yeah. when you, when, when you're pros and, and friends, you know, you figure that out and you just go, okay. And everybody knows where, when, and how to lay back and also where, when, and how to find your own space because yeah. it does, it does get a little crowded in the bus or on the road and you have your own room and you need your own space. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's an, it's an aberrant world on a certain level uh, <laughs> in touring. But the thing is, if you, if you have mutual respect um, for each other, then you can have disagreements, but they don't turn into, you know, like a hissy fit or anything like that. You, uh, you, you resolve them. And when we're in the studio, there's lots of ideas flying around and your ego has to be one where if some, you know, you come up with an idea and everybody kind of goes, mm, no, I don't think so. Then that's fine. You know, it's a, it's a democratic, it's a democratic institution. And, and we run it in, in that way. There's no band leader. Everybody's on an equal, um, footing so we're having that's a ball great. i mean this, this is great that's i, I, I couldn't great. be happier at that's this point great. well how, how about you speak to your to your book a little bit tell us about the book well this was this was really a, a strange journey when i was on the road with phil collins in 2004 there was talk that he was going to retire at the end of the tour and um i thought I may never see a lot of these people again. And those are massive shows. I mean, we probably had a hundred crew people out there on the road with us mm -hmm. and, you know, all flight crews and all, all this stuff. And I thought I may never see a lot of these people again because they were from all over the world. So I thought, I'm just going to go ahead and take a picture of everybody on the tour and put a little folder together in my laptop and I could revisit it someday when I don't have memories and I'll stare at these pictures <laughs> and wonder what they mean. Who is that? <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, I had, they had hired a bass tech, a guy named Steve Winstead, nicknamed Chinner. And um, he didn't really have much to do on the tour because I've always been pretty self-sufficient on, on tours. And he came in way overqualified. He's a really brilliant guy to have in your corner. So he ended up doing lots of jobs on the tour. And we would joke about it all the time. Well, the first person I go up to to take a picture from my little folder he's it's chinner and he's sitting in his laptop typing away and i go hey steve hey, chinner come on give me a smile and he doesn't break stride and he just goes and i take the picture of him flipping me off and i go hmm this is kind of okay so i went to, <laughs> i went to phil um his manager tony smith went to everybody in the band everybody in the crew caterers truck drivers bus drivers uh, everybody and had them all flip me off <laughs> uh, and I ended up with about a hundred and about a hundred and thirty pictures by the end of this, and uh, and I put it away. You know, for, you know, didn't forget about it, but just tucked it away. Um, a couple of years later, I, I went on the road with to the band Toto, and I decided I'm going to do the those finger pictures again with the guys. Well, at this point, when I fin we finished that, I was up to about two hundred fifty pictures. It when you have a collection, one of something doesn't mean anything. A bunch of something becomes a collection. Right. And um, all of a sudden, uh, I was motivated and I started taking pictures. And at this point, I have over 12,000 photographs of everybody, you know, in the business that I've worked with people like from James Taylor to Charlie Watts to Jeff Beck to you name it. Um, but also athletes that I've worked with and actors, but also a lot of the, the, the person on the streets. And um, I was at a, a function and I met a guy named, uh, nicknamed Blue, his name's Richard Tremarchi. And he's a, um, a fine arts, uh, he works in fine arts. And I, we sat in, and I told him about this idea about doing a book. And he said, let's do it. Because <laughs> he had, he had the, the, the wherewithal and the facility to put this together. And we started going through 12,000 photographs. And we honed it down to 6,000 pictures. So I've got this big, huge coffee table book that's called Everybody Loves Me. And, um, <laughs> and, um, and it, all it is is pictures of people giving the finger in there. I mean, and it is so great. just insane. And, and, and for me, looking through it, the memories, I mean, I, my parents are in it. Um, oh. We did the Grammys 
a, a few years back and I got a great shot. I played with um, uh, Merle Haggard, Chris Christofferson and Willie Nelson. So I got the three of them standing together, flipping me off. And uh, it's, <laughs> oh, it's, wow. it's just crazy. nuts, but it's been really uh, something that would have never happened had the pandemic not struck, you know, so it gave so where, where can people get that book? Um, I, I had to create a website for this. And actually on the website, it's fun. I'm, beyond the book, I am also have T-shirts that have my beard on the front of them. So I people keep that. buying those and sending me pictures of them wearing my beard. And I was also a, a fine arts student in college. So I've got prints of my drawings and paintings are available too in wow. like museum quality. But go to LelandSklarsBeard.com. <laughs> <laughs> because somebody absconded with LelandSklar.com oh, and LeeSklar.com. And oh, I, I, the heck if I'm going to go and, and grovel at somebody's feet to uh, pay them money to get my name. Oh, so, no. so we just thought about it and said, let's make it LelandSklarsBeard.com. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's great. And, and I'm doing everything myself. I get the orders. I fill the orders. I, I sign the books and mail them, do everything. That's great. Well, what an entrepreneur you've become. I know, you've yeah, been I mean, busy. I, you know, I was almost going to make a t-shirt that said, uh, I was not made for retail. You know, <laughs> this, this is, man, this is, making the book was easy. Doing everything since, it's, it's, it's it, hard work, man. I've totally new appreciation for people that work in, in retail. It's, mm -hmm. this is easy. Yeah. This is easy. Hey, speaking of the base, maybe we could do a little little demo um we talked about leland doing talking about some of the parts that you played on some of the tracks that folks will know and recognize and if i may make a request hey. i am a, i'm a huge jackson brown fan and grew up listening to him my whole life and probably know the words to every single song so i would love to hear dr my eyes because okay you, okay well, you, you did that a little bit during our sound check and maybe you could could show folks that song so. before we get illegal you know, we'll, uh, I'll, I know, I'll just <laughs> just a little clip of it because we can't play too much but a little nugget but yeah, yeah i'll tell you when we were we cut that first album with jackson at crystal recording studios in hollywood um on vine street and uh, richard orshoff was the uh, uh engineer and producer on that and uh, I, I didn't know anything about Jackson and when we went in the studio. And as soon as this guy came in and sat down with his guitar or at the piano and started playing, I went, this is going to be something amazing because mm. that, that first album was, was a pretty monumental record. And, um, you know, and it's hard for me to remember how we crafted Dr. My Eyes because it's, it's really unorthodox the way this whole thing came together. Um, and having Jesse Ed Davis come in and do the guitar solo on it. And when we cut the original track, Russ Kunkel played congas on the original track and then overdubbed drums afterwards. Um, huh. But the thing that was fascinating was when we were in the studio about two weeks ago with the immediate family at Jackson studio, Jackson was hanging out. And there's a, I, I for the life of me, keep forgetting the name of this project, which is my fault. But it's this thing where they pick a song, I guess, like almost annually. Robbie Robertson did one where um, they pick a song and the artist does it. And then they go around the world and they add people all over the world to it. I remember seeing that with the weight last year. I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was. It was exactly. really, really beautifully cool. done. Well, yeah. This time they wanted to do Dr. My Eyes. Oh, how cool. Um, so Jackson said, maybe after you guys finished working like one of the nights, we could we could cut this. So. Uh, we finished up and we went in, into to the room where his piano is. And this bass is the, my old Peace Love bass. And this is the bass I played on Dr. My Eyes. Russ Kunkel had the congas that he played on Dr. My Eyes. Oh, and we started playing and we kind of stopped and looked at each other and went, <laughs> man, the last time we did this was 50 years ago. It was oh amazing. Really, really pretty surreal. So. Um, mm -hmm. Let me go ahead and, and give you give you a taste of, of this here. Um, here. Here we go. I'll keep an eye on this, try not to go over time.
That's 30 seconds. I think that's our legal time. Oh, oh no. I know that this is this is what sucks about all this stuff, but I wish I could do the whole thing. I wish I could do. No, well, we'll just great. have to come see you live with the band sometime. Yeah, soon. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. Did you? How did you get hooked up with some of the artists that you initially worked with out here in in LA? And actually, maybe the first question would be, where did you grow up, and how did you begin your musical journey? And then maybe we could get to all that. I don't know. What do you think, Freebo? Yeah. How should we? Well, I think first. I aged, I never grew up. Oh, so okay. <laughs> I think that's the case. Um, I, I was born in Milwaukee, um, Wisconsin, but my family moved here when I was about four years old to Los Angeles. And um, when I was about five years old, just turning five, my parents used to watch the Liberace TV show. And, well. yeah, and um, I became enamored with the piano at that point and we had a baby grand piano in the house and I started studying piano. I just, I, I took to it like a fish to water. And um, I, I, I had like, you know, I don't want to say a child prodigy, but I really, it really developed very quickly where I ended up winning some awards from the Hollywood Bowl Association when I was like eight years old and met Eugene Normandy, the conductor of the Philadelphia, oh, Philadelphia Orchestra. Orchestra. But I was like a classical snob, and that's all I was studying was classical music. And uh, but when I and I've told this story, you know, anybody who's here heard my interviews, I always go back to this. When I um, went into junior high school at 12 years old, the um, music te I assumed I'd play piano at that point, and the music teacher said, "No, we need a bass player, string bass player." And, uh, and he pulled out an old K upright, big blonde upright. And I ended, uh, he put it in my arms and I plucked one note and felt that vibration and said, mm -hmm. sold, uh, I love this. <laughs> and at that point I was kind of burned out with piano, but that teacher's name was uh, Theodore Lynn. And I'll tell you one thing, a great teacher can change your entire life. Um, and I always credit everything I've really ever accomplished in this to, to Ted Lynn, um, really launching me in this direction. So I was always in bands, and, and, but I was like doing still classical and jazz. Um, it really wasn't until the Beatles came along that I really twisted my head around and started listening to other music and then became like a huge uh, fan of the, the English invasion with cream and you know and Jimi Hendrix and, and all that and, and really focused on, on hard rock and that kind of stuff. Um, but I was always in bands but never really thought I'd have a career in music. You know it's one of those vague uh, industries that everybody you know like your parents friends are all going when's he gonna get serious and when's he gonna get a job kind of thing. Nobody can imagine you could actually do a, something that's called playing and actually have it be your profession. <laughs> so um, so I, I was in college, but I was in, in the late 60s, I was in a band called Wolfgang uh, here in Los Angeles. And uh, we were managed by Bill Graham. And that's why we called ourselves Wolfgang, because that was Bill Graham's real name was Wolfgang. And what better way to endear yourself to your manager <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> naming the band after him? Wow. <laughs> It was during that, with that band uh, around 1969, that uh, there was a, a friend of mine, John Fishbeck, who produced and engineered all the early Stevie Wonder stuff, like Songs in the Key of Life. And that, well, he was one of the, the owners of uh, Crystal Recording Studios, where we did Jackson's record. Um, he would come up and hang out at our rehearsals with us because he was really good friends with Bugs Pemberton, who was our drummer. Well, at one of our rehearsals, he brought a friend of his who had just come back from England and named James Taylor. And 
so this guy, you know, I don't, none of us know James or anything. He, he, nothing had happened here for him yet. And he had just finished recording Sweet Baby James. And uh, so we hung, he hung out with us for a couple of days and that was it. Well, then he got offered a gig at the Troubadour here in Los Angeles. And they had a band. They had Danny Korchmar on guitar. Carol King was the piano player. And Russ Kunkel was the drummer, but they didn't have a bass player. And James said, there was this guy that I met at, at uh, this rehearsal. And I think he'd be you know, the, the right guy for it. And they tracked me down and I went, played what I thought was gonna be one gig with him and it turned into the rest of my life. Uh -huh. <laughs> you just don't know. I always encourage players to, I say, never say no. Yeah. Things, you know, you get called for gigs and, and, and your friends might be going, oh, that's lame, that's gonna suck. And you just go, who knows? But you walk in that door and you might meet one person there that could be a life changer for you, um, yeah. another player, whatever. Um, so I encourage people all the time to, uh, you know, just, I mean, it, it, if you do something and it goes really south, then you have the option next time of saying no to that. Yeah, absolutely. Right. But I never say no at, at the onset unless I'm already booked for something. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's you know, I, 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 but excuse me, Lee, I, I, I thought you played on Sweet Baby James. Did you know no, um, Bobby West um, played bass on some of that? I, th um, I forget because it was really weird when we did the James's first tour when we were in England, when they reviewed the show, I think on his English album, there was a bass player named Lewis Sonoma. And uh, and so when they reviewed the show, they said, yeah, and on bass was Lewis Sonoma. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was funny. <laughs> no, I, the first album I did with with James, I think, was One Man Dog, was the first actual studio. I, I toured with him uh, on the first album, but the first recording I did with him was One Man Dog, um, and uh, and it, it's yeah. been you know it's a, been an unbelievable run. But so much of this business is uh, one thing I will give a huge shout out to, uh, and a huge chunk of my career is probably involved with him is Peter Asher from people who knew him from Peter and Gordon and all that. But Peter was producing, you know, uh, Linda Ronstadt and James Taylor and, you know, all kinds of stuff and, uh, and management. And one of the things that was great with Peter was he insisted that our names appear on the albums because the Wrecking Crew, none of those people ever got album credits. So if people would be listening to Frank Sinatra or the Beach Boys and didn't realize it was all the same musicians playing on everything. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think people would look at James's record, see our names on it and go, well, if they're good enough for him, let's let's mm. call track those guys down. And uh, told no, a similar I, I, story I, I, for I agree with that yeah. so much that uh, I feel so fortunate that I was part of that era and with yeah. Bonnie and uh, and Maria Moldauer and, and uh, the records I played on in that in that genre, uh, they did put the names and very often the pictures on the back. And, you know, I find it kind of sad that so many more people knew who I was for the few records that I played on, as opposed to James Jamerson, who, for those people who don't know, was the iconic, there's the word again, but he really was. Yeah. He, he, he played on almost all of the Motown hits. That's just a phenomenal player yeah. uh or another a bass player that most people have never heard of ronnie baker ronnie you familiar with ronnie baker yeah yeah out of, out of philadelphia so much of the uh the, the sigma sound and the uh, uh the gamble and huff crew yeah and, uh, and those people never got their names in the, on, on the back of the record or carol k you know who was yeah. the, very much part of the wrecking crew so yeah. yeah we we really were we really were lucky and that's another thing we were talking about during the sound check lee that uh, or was it yesterday, but <laughs> just the fact that uh, we can commiserate here, it's okay, but that uh, not just bass players, but session musicians who uh, who generally invent their own parts, rarely just yeah. tell us exactly what to play. They might put a chart in front of us with some chords so you know what the outline is, but you come up with the part, so yeah. you're creating something. You're uh, no different than Beethoven or Bach writing you know, a moving bass line. And yeah, all the players do that, and we get paid, uh, you know, scale or double scale or triple scale. You get paid for the session, and and that's it. And uh, it, it it's really kind of sad that uh, whether it be the unions uh, or the record companies um, or the artists themselves, 
never never quite appreciated that. So I know you have strong feelings about not not to get on the pity pot or anything, but yeah, but I I, I, I can relate to that because it's I mean it's a, it's it's a part of us that's there and it it's it's kind of sad that it's not compensated monetarily. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, there's so many times where, you know, where we've gone in the studio and the person sits down and plays a song and it is skeletal. They really have no yeah. ideas. And the band puts together arrangements, puts in, you know, it goes, this thing needs a bridge. And the band comes up with a bridge or an introduction and things like And at the end of the day, the artist looks like a genius to the public. And they had nothing to do with a great deal of what took place in the studio. Um, mm -hmm. But it's one of those things I learned really early on that this is this is the nature of the beast mm -hmm. and um, and arguing against it was all it was going to do was get you not hired because yeah, they weren't you can't, you can't do that. Exactly. Yeah. And I wanted to work. You know, I, I never wanted to have a job. So it was always <laughs> playing music. And uh, but yeah, it, it, there's times where it's frustrating, um, but it is what it is. Yeah, there's. Yeah. I, I don't feel pity about it because I go. You know, I mean, I, I could have been a guy doing hot tarring in Atlanta in on roofs in August. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's a, there's a, a lot tougher jobs in the world than mine. Oh, so. for sure. No, don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining. It's just no, I. I, I it, 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 most story. people don't realize that. <clears throat> excuse me. The role of a of a session musician yeah. and how it affects. The record itself and very yeah. often the the song and the writing well i was song. thinking about that just yesterday when we were in the studio um working on some <clears throat> demos and also listening to the some of the stuff that we had done in muscle shoals a couple of years ago in preparation to go back and we soloed each person for just a second because we were trying to make sure that there was we were trying to find where something weird was going on and so we listened to each person playing for about 10 seconds and I just loved hearing everybody separately because as a group, it's this funky, cool, uh, super rhythmic and just beautiful. And it all works together and nobody rehearsed. And yeah. I'm just so utterly amazed for me. Like I'm a singer. I am not. And I come up with stuff vocally in the moment. So I guess I get it in that way. But I don't do that with my instrument, my guitar. I, I just those are not skills that that I have developed yet or maybe ever. And it just amazes me that in the moment, you and Mark and Will and Jeff and everybody has finds their little pocket and just figures out exactly what they're going to do while they're doing it totally intuitively listening to what's happening around them so that each part on its own sounds kind of strange because there's nothing else happening, but when it's all together, it's perfect. And it's just amazing exactly. to me. Yeah, that, that's magic. What you're e e each it's part, magic. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a classic thing about ensemble playing, you know, and I always say that, you know, for ensemble playing that if you, the most important thing is listening. And if you listen, you'll intuitively know what to play because you're listening to what somebody else is playing. So you don't play that, you play something that goes in tandem with that. And before, and, and then there's the more people who are playing, the less each person needs to play, otherwise yeah. it's crowded. So it's a question of coming up with parts and the part itself could be chink. Yeah, chink, that's what's so amazing. It's, it's like, are you kidding I me? I love it. But with everything else going on. And you feel the rhythm even in like what Mark is playing, where, right. where when he's not playing, you feel that rhythm in it. It's just very, yeah. very cool. It's It really is an incredible thing when the juices are flowing in the studio and everybody, because the, the thing that you really have to, to always remember is it's not about you. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's very good. the song, it's the artist. Um, yeah. And so you're you're trying to find parts that really move the song along and if yeah. that if that all that if they only need from me to go i'm fine with that if that's what, <laughs> if that's what fits it that that's perfect um for it i'm not showing off i'm not there to impress anybody i'm there to to serve the song and, um, and, that, and that's exactly it. It's a, it really is about serving the song. And I think that separates, you know, the pros from the amateurs, you know, and, and we've all been amateurs. I've been at that place where yeah. you really want to get your licks in and you go and you, and you say, oh, God, playing too much. I, I often, when I do, especially I'm doing my own stuff, something with Alice, 
I'll try stuff and I invariably wind up taking away playing less and playing less and going, I don't need to do that. And, and, and you, you have to leave your ego at the door because it's yeah. not about you. It's about the song and the, and the person delivering the song is the singer. So you're yeah. listening to the singer, but you're aware of the song, the chord changes, where it's going, but how you frame that, you know? And so it, it, yeah, you just need to bring enough ability to where if they say, I want you to do something like insane here, do step out, you know, kind of thing that yeah, yeah. you've got the facility to do it, that you're not. I, I have a term for that. I call it a moment. You know, yeah. Every, every moment. song I have a little moment. A little moment. You know, and and it's, it's that's my moment. I know I'm and, always and, like and free and I, I, I want my moment. Give me my moment. I want it. And I'll take it. But it's gotta be the, in the right place in the right little yeah. thing. And and when, and you know, as a listener, if somebody listened to the bass, that's some cool stuff. You want to hear that, but not all the time. It's a little signature, you know, and they're yeah. just this thing where they go, I knew that was you. You know, I like your thing on Dr. Mind. Diggity, diggity, yes. diggity, 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 boom. I mean, that's the only time we do that in the song. And well, maybe the second time. Well, it happens, it happens leading in each time, but still, it's just one of those. Yeah, it, 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 it's that moment, and then you just kind of rock out in your own, like, cool, yeah. cool way. You know, you um, talked before, you said something about James Taylor's record about what is it, One Man Dog or something like that? Or Yeah. yeah that was the first recording I did with him. Now, James was a serious challenge to play with because he's such a comprehensive guitarist that he always has a moving bass line going yes. with his thumb. So for me, it was, what am I going to do here to justify yeah. being here? Because he's already playing bass. So it was <laughs> yeah. a matter of, on some songs, somewhat doubling him, and on other songs, finding lyrical parts that completely moved around him. Yeah. And uh, it, it was a real challenge to, to figure out how to play with him. Uh, unlike most other guys that I knew that were just kind of, you know, strumming along or doing something, James is like a one-man band like, on guitar. He, he thinks like a bass player. I yeah. Mean, he, he's really bottom he's up. Amazing. Yeah. And uh, so so that, that was great. But um, I just popped open the chat window, and I'm seeing some questions. Should I answer any of these questions at this point? Well, yeah, could, could, before think, you do that, can I try one thing? I'd like Sure, to anything you thing. want. It's your show. I'm just, the, I mean, I'm your geek. No. No, it's it's our show. But I be speaking. See, I brought up the the one man dog thing because I know you're a dog person. Do you yeah. still have you still have a dog? You still have any dogs? My boys are sitting right outside the door here. I think. Your great, boys. great. Well, I I have a whole CD of dog songs, and I I would like to play you my my most recent dog oh. song. And uh, the folks out there have heard that, but I think you'll enjoy this. It's oh, I'd love to hear it. I I wrote this with my friend Harold Payne. And uh, I, I needed, I came up with an idea for the song and I had the chorus and I had the music, but I need to come up with some clever lyrics. So we, we threw this together and I've uh, showed Alice a couple notes on the bass and Just got a got a grooving on this thing. So I'd love to share it with you. It's called She Loved My Dog More Than Me. It's a true Oh, story. fantastic. I love it. And if you're listening on the radio, you are listening to WPVM LP in Asheville, North Carolina, 103.7 on the dial and globally at WPVMFM.org. That was very professional. That was great. I had that to read it good. from the sheet. Though. You did it well. <laughs> in your radio voice. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Ready? <laughs> time everything was so fine and cozy just my baby and me i was so well fed and my breakfast in bed i was happy as a man can be then my buddy called up had the cutest little pup i couldn't help but take him in i little did i know her affection would go to my new little four-legged friend now she loved my dog more than me She loved my dog more than me I love my dog She loved my dog But she loved my dog more than me ba 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 We were lying by the fire, burning with desire, when suddenly to my chagrin, 
As the fire got to stoking, came a cold nose of poking Somewhere it should not have been I thought she'd shoo him away, but she told him to stay It kind of took me out of the zone now a man's best friend gets a girl in the end And I'm left a hole in the bone You know what I mean, Lee? Cause she loved my dog more than me She loved my dog more than me I love my dog She loved my dog But she loved my dog more than me ba 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 So I'm sitting here fuming while he's getting all the grooming. That ain't how it's supposed to be. Well, you know I don't hate him, but I got an ultimatum. Baby, it's the dog and me. Well, I got a reply. She let me outside and she handed me my people child. Now I'm howling at the moon while he's up in my room. And I'm in the doghouse now. Everybody sing, ready? She love my dog more than me. She love my dog more than me. I love my dog. She love my dog. But she love my dog more than me. Ba 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 There's a moral to the story When you fall from the glory You gotta do it gracefully So I'm back in the bed With the dog at the head We're a nuclear family And I accept my fate You know this little debate Because it ain't no democracy From the moment he came And then the dog on shame That she loved my dog more than me, two, three, four. She loved my dog more than me, nice. She loved my dog more than me. I love my dog. She loved my dog, and she loved my dog more than me. One more. She said that she loved my dog more than me. She loved my dog more than me. I love my dog. She loved my dog, but she loved my dog more than me. Yes, I love my dog. She loved my dog, but she loved my dog more than me. Ba 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 That's so, uh, I'm sitting here the whole time thinking video. You have to re do a video of this. This is <laughs> genius. You do need you to do You got a any video. ideas for uh, exactly how to do it? Oh God, it's, it's oh million it's different really ways. Really good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank well, you. Um, I can't say that I was looking forward to playing bass in front of you guys, but yeah, so, somebody sounded said wonderful. Chat, I, Somebody said in the chat, I can't believe Stop. Alice is playing bass in front of Leland Sklar. <laughs> hey, we're, we're all in this together, okay? Yeah. We hey. are. I, I, hey. I have a good teacher. Let's let's put it that way. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. working on it. Okay, yeah. that reminded me of a joke. Can I tell you a joke? Please. Certainly. Okay, so two guys are walking down the street and they see this dog on, on the lawn and it's licking itself. And one guy looks at the other guy and he goes, God, I wish I could do that. And his friend looks at him and he goes, you should try petting him first. <laughs> That's my symbol. <laughs> That's Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. That. Thank you for that. That's a, That's a good one. Try the piccata. <laughs> That's, That's a great tune, though. I really thank like it. Thank you very much. And it's so true. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you can be displaced so easily by a pup. Oh, they're just so cute. Yeah, they're so good. Yeah. Well, I'm wondering if you guys could talk a little bit about. Well, first, I'm I'm interested in that special relationship between a bass player and a drummer. 
because you had talked about that with Michael Jokum, who we had hoped to have on our show, but we never mm. got a chance to have Michael Lee, on. Lee knows Michael. I know Michael very, very well. Sessions yeah, I just, I know that, you know, with Michael or some of the other drummers you've played with, I'm just curious, like, what that, what's that vibe about? How does that, how does that work? Well, you first, Lee. Well, I mean, it, it really, it's like if you're, you know, building a, a house, you know, you're as strong as the house is going to be as strong and good as its foundation. And for me, it really is that the bass and drums are really can make so much out of a, out of a project. Um, the beauty of the drums is just setting up the rhythmic side of it and the bass joins into that, but it's, you're sort of a conduit to the melodic side also. Um, so it's, a, you're in a transitional seat, but for me, I, I've done so many projects where I walk in a room and if I see the if I see the drummer, if I know him, like if I walk in and I see Russ or Jim Keltner or in the days when it would be, you know, Jeff Picard or something, I kind of didn't care about what else was going on. Yeah. I knew we had a connection there and it was going to be really solid and strong. Yeah. Um, and then one of the most exciting things is to do a project where I meet a new drummer that I've never worked with before. And all of a sudden we're one bar together and I, you know it's going to be great um, or you know it's not going to be great um, yeah. when it's not good it's really a, it's it's hard um, I've played with drummers that it's like pulling teeth trying to lock yes. together with them yeah so it's not always magic but when it is great that foundation um, can really make the rest of the music soar um, yeah. and I, and I like the responsibility of it um, yeah. I, I, I like when we're on stage playing that I don't have to be up front all the time that I can be sitting back, Russ and I just kind of look at each other with the immediate family, and we just sort of grin and, and kind of <laughs> just watch watch the other guys in their in their uh, bodybuilder pose off, you know, because <laughs> three, three guitars up front and then us in the back. <laughs> yes, yeah. that's funny. That you know, I, 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 it is interesting what you said about uh, it, it. It's it's not even about playing with like as a bass player, the drummer, it's not even playing about a drummer who's good. It's about the connection. I mean, yeah. I played with drummers who are known to be good and I've heard them on records and sound great. And for one reason or another, uh, the drummer and I just didn't connect. Yeah. And it was like pulling teeth. And I played with other drummers who maybe on a scale of one to 10, you know, were maybe an eight, but they were really into me and I was into them and we created great music. So it, 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 it just like with the conversation, you know, it's not about yeah. how many 75 cent words you, you, you know, or what subjects you can talk about. It's how you connect. And I think that's the bottom line. I was going to uh, just to further what you said, Alice, that uh, a, a lot of times I say, well, what's really important is when the bass player, the bass and the, and the kick drum need to be playing at the same time. <laughs> and, and I mean, sometimes that's a really cool thing. It's nice to put the put the point on the bass and the note for the bass drum, but sometimes it's really good when it's opposite. So, I mean, these rules don't work. It, eventually, I think it becomes intuitive. And, and at yeah. some point you work it out. I'm, I don't know about you, but often I'll say to the drummer, I say, hey, could you give me a boom boom so you can get my anticipation? Yeah. And certain thing. It would also hit the downbeat. Do, do you find much, much talking communication? I, I agree totally with what, what, what you said there. Um, also, when I look back at like the earlier days of, of pop music and stuff, the kick drum was not a huge instrument to be dealt with. You listen to Beatles records and, and all these, you know, the kick drum's just there. It's all kind of mid drums and high drums. And the bass was really the dominant instrument in that in that range in that rhythmic thing where like so many concerts I go to now I can't hear the bass up there because the front of house guy thinks that the kick drum is the most important instrument coming off the stage yeah. and you're just going god would you stop that um, <laughs> but I get I, I, I don't you know musically it's wonderful sometimes when you really lock in and get a pattern going together but I really, I, I really don't like when they say, you know, you guys got to really, can, let's grid this out. And you guys like, I want to hear you dub. I just go, it's like machine music then. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'd really rather, I don't, you know, it, but it's once again, everything is predicated on the song. Right. And some songs really want to have that kind of a, that, that lock. And other ones just want to have a little more freedom. And sometimes I'll let the, the, the drummer, set up that pattern and I'll do parts that are actually sort of swimming around it 
and not not committing myself to that same exact pattern. And, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. right. Agreed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Totally. Well, you know, we're coming up on on, uh, on on the hour where we're going to lose the radio portion of the show, <laughs> but we're going to continue this show. Yeah. And just want to let the folks know if, if you're on the radio and you're going to lose it, you can join us on uh, Facebook or YouTube. Why don't you tell them about how they can do that and the other folks, how they can join us in the uh, chat room. So we, we can do more of this and some, some examples where, uh, where Lee actually does play some more bass and yeah. show some of the tunes he played on. Yeah, so we are going to sign off from WPVM on the radio and we are going to continue the show as we have been on Facebook and YouTube with the additional fun option of joining us in the zoom room if you so desire um for about half an hour ish of hanging and chatting and playing some more music and answering some questions that you guys have been sending in so definitely check check the chat uh on facebook or youtube and you will see that there is a meeting id and passcode there's not a direct link you have to actually open zoom and enter the meeting id and passcode and you can join us backstage there's already some folks coming in and we're gonna continue to broadcast the show out so wherever you choose to watch or listen you can um you can still hang out with us for another little while we'll 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 have a great time is there any food? And we're going to be doing, there's no food, there's no deli tray, I'm sorry. Oh, man. But we are going to be doing our Cordial Cable giveaway, which I'm not sure if we mentioned to Lee, but we give away a cable oh, yeah. from our wonderful sponsor, who is also, uh, Leland is one yeah. of their artists yeah. as sure well. Yeah. Cordial Cable right here. Us yeah, too. We've got all our cables of Cordial. Yep. Yes. So I think we are officially off the air bye Asheville if we have if we're still there bye everybody bye, in Asheville. Asheville join us join us online and and, and now, that, now we can say any damn thing we want we don't actually know exactly when right. it ends yeah just just in case it's like we're hanging over <laughs> for a minute or two I see people cool. are already coming in the chat room. but I will say um now that we are off the air that folks if you are watching and many of you who watch every week already know this but we do take your donations uh gratefully for the show if you're able to send us a tip because you're enjoying the music and the conversation tonight we so appreciate that you can go to uh PayPal or Venmo or my website and you can enter a credit card you can send us a check all those links are in the chat as well so thank you for that we, we split it three ways we so do. Lee can get some dog food for his very large dogs. You have and large and dogs Lee there. has, his book is available at LelandSklarsBeard.com. His book is, is available, t-shirts. I'm sure he's got art as well, fine art yeah. prints. Yeah. And I have a Patreon. Freebo has a Patreon. Freebo and I are both going to be hitting the road pretty soon. Actually, at the end of next week, our first stop is... A house concert in Denver with our buddy Michael Jokum. With who, Michael who Jokum, is great chat. Yep, and then yep. we're going to be making our way to Chicago, Kansas, uh, Lawrence, Kansas, just outside of Kansas St. City. Louis, Chicago, All those details are on Atlanta. my website. So go to alicehow.com, and we'd love to have you guys at. I'm so glad you're hitting the road. Yeah, so are we. You we know, are so really, excited. I mean, we love doing this and love making music, and I mean. It's interesting how you've learned because you do that with your YouTube uh, show as well. You've learned how to you're not just on, but you're talking to a camera, but you know, the people are out there. Yeah, you feel them, you know, which is really cool. So we've learned how to do that. But man, can't wait to actually feel the whole thing and see the people. And and yeah, and that'd be so nice. It's, It's the lifeblood of what we do. It sure is. And by the way, Lee, I think you will enjoy uh, the chat, you know, afterwards at some point when you go back and, and uh, there's really some some fascinating comments. I think you really enjoy. No, it's great. It's great. I've been checking some of these out on here and uh, yeah. it's it's cool. I mean, I really I, I enjoy this. I've had kind of the best time I've almost I've ever had is um, doing my YouTube channel and um, having a live stream on that because the and it's not so much about the focus on me. They've become such a, a deep community together that um, sometimes, like before it even starts, I've opened the chat window and everybody's talking to each other like they're at like a, a right. cool family reunion. And yeah. and to me, this is really the essence of what this has all become. 
is is a, is a during a period of, of social distancing to have something where people can really come together and and share yeah. ups and downs and you know what's going on in their lives and so many times like the uh, the the stream will turn into people all talking about food and restaurants and you know where they live and it's because <laughs> people would tell me they go well I don't play bass or I'm not a musician so I don't know what what it would be like to be on that. And as soon as they come on and they go, oh, man, this is unbelievable. <laughs> you know, it's like it's got, you know, there's a talk of music, you know, but for the most there's so many other aspects of people's lives that are being uh, shared and, and addressed. And I love it. It's a day. Yeah, absolutely. Really cool. Yeah, it, it does. Uh, it, it becomes a community. Dan Navarro was talking about that, too. He was doing a show every day for a while. I don't think he still is. He's on the road, but yeah. but he's talking it's really as much about the community and the people who come in to chat and they get yeah. to know each other. And uh, I mean, it's no different than being at a, at a house concert. And I've loved seeing that on here too. We've been doing this show every week since last September and many of the folks that come into yeah. the room after, hi guys. In fact, mo most, of the the pe most of the people I see, the, the names on there, we know them all and, and yeah. welcome. It's great to see you all. Yes, it's so uh, nice to see you including all Including Mike Smith, our cordial guy. Hi. Great, Mike. Great. There you can see yes. Mike over there on the side. So let's get to a couple of these questions. What do you think? We've got, I mean, oh man, there's, did you see a one that you'd like to answer, Leland? Because I know you, you can see. Um, hold on. Uh, let me just go back here real quick. I'll, I'll shoot some quick answers off so we don't do a whole lot of time here. Um, so, uh, John Callahan was curious about Kate Taylor's new album. And um, the thing that was great was we did sister, James Taylor's sister, Kate Taylor. Mm -hmm. We did her first album, Sister Kate, 50 years ago. And they just decided to do another album. And we went in the studio with Peter Asher, who produced that one, and Russ Kunkel and Danny Korchmar and myself, and Wadi Wachtel and Albert Lee. And um, and we've done a new album and we're actually I'm going to do a quick run with them uh, starting on, I think, July 24th for about 10 days uh, with Peter and Kate. And uh, it's uh, it's a really good album. Kate's really is a wonderful artist. So so that's great. Uh, did Lee ever play with Tommy Bolin, Mike Edwards? Um, I knew Tommy from the days when he was in Zephyr and I was in Wolfgang because our local manager, we were both managed by the same crook, basically. <laughs> and, uh, and we went, but we did gigs together with Zephyr and with Wolfgang. And when I went to New York to do uh, Spectrum with Billy Cobham, I walked in the room and there was Tommy Bolin. Um, and Tommy was probably one of the greatest guitar players that uh, I've ever worked with. I love Tommy dearly and he died way, way too young. He was only about 27 when he passed away. Um, but uh, so getting to do Spectrum uh, with Tommy was one of the high points in my whole career. And uh, th that album we cut in 1973 and it still stands the test of, of time. Every time I see Jeff Beck, he comes running up to me going, Stratus, Stratus, because he always plays Stratus in his shows. And he said, Tommy's guitar playing changed his approach to playing guitar, hmm. which is pretty deep wow. when you think Jeff Beck was that influenced by somebody. Wow. That sure uh, is. Dave, and one last one here, and then we'll... Yeah, we'll yeah. Uh, David Wynn, uh, can you give me info on the cruise coming in February? Uh, uh, Jan, my first wife and I will be celebrating our 50th anniversary. Love to take her on that. Uh, it's called... I'm not sure where the links will be are for that, but it's called The Rock Legends cruise and it's like deep purple is going to be on it and a whole bunch of different oh, cool. uh, people i'm not sure what the cruise line is but if you start you know going googling up rock legends cruise i think it's february of, of next year and it leaves from fort lauderdale and it goes to the grand cayman and it's about four days all together that it's sounds mm -hmm. wonderful yeah. pretty cool there's tons of bands and musicians on it the one we did Last time, Roger Daltrey was on it, and Nancy Wilson from Heart, and um, oh, great. Uh, got just ton, tons of people. It's really fun. So if you can make it, please, please do. And uh, well, thanks for answering some of those, Lee. That's great. Yeah, anything you want. Anything you want. I'm here for you, kids. Well, well, then in that case, why don't you do a little, another little demo for us? Because that was so much fun. 
Well, I'll tell you what, um, after sitting here talking about Tommy Bolin and everything, one of the most iconic bass parts for me uh, was on uh, Spectrum. Uh, and let me see if I can find this on here. And uh, if this is the one where Jeff Beck comes up and gets in my face every time about this. Um, <laughs> but we cut this whole album uh, at Electric Lady in New York. And it was Billy Cobham on drums, Jan Hammer on keyboards, uh, Tommy Bolin on guitar and myself on bass. This is the bass I played on, on this track. And it's called Stratus. So here we go. Let me... Uh, Get it. Thirty seconds. Oh man, <laughs> this is like it's torture. It goes. <laughs> That's the whole essence of the entire song. But everywhere, anywhere I've gone in the world, if I start playing that. Guys go, people go nuts and they jump all over it and they want to play it. So, um, mm -hmm. this is the bass I played on that original track. So, mm -hmm. oh wow, I'm sorry about my squeaky chair here. I mean, this, oh, it's really, it's really funny, bane, actually. This is the bane of my live streams and stuff. I sit here and I have people sending me lithium grease, um, you know, <laughs> cans of WD 40 and going. And, and then half the other people are going, don't change a thing. Don't touch it. So. Somebody was saying, is that a chicken in the room or is that his chair? <laughs> Sounds like a little. <laughs> like, but ma ma it makes me want to ask you, you do, 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 do. first of all, uh, do you practice much to keep your fingers in shape? Because at this point in my life, I go, do, 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 do. My, if I weren't really practicing, my, my fingers would... Uh, I would be blah, 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 blah. I mean, you, you, you've um, got amazing dexterity. I'm wondering how much you practice. Um, I really don't practice as much as I should. And this year has really taken it a kind of a toll uh, on it because normally I, I, I would be gigging so much and in the studio so much that there was really, you know, no time to practice. Uh, with the advent this year of, of getting into these things like the book, the the uh, YouTube channel, I mean, all these different things, all of a sudden I'm finding myself not playing as much as I want to play. Like, um, so I'm trying, if I can, to at least maybe in the evening go grab an hour and just go play. And what I, what I like to do is I play along with things. I'm, I've been playing along with immediate family stuff just to keep that fresh because we're going to hit the road. Um, I love playing Phil Collins' show, so a lot of times I'll go up and I'll just sit and I'll play um, his set. Um, I know I'll never probably end up playing those songs again if, because I don't know if he's ever gonna, he, they're getting ready to do a Genesis tour, but uh, whether Phil's really? gonna work after that or not, we just don't know. But Maybe with Peter Gabriel as well? No, it's, it's, uh, it's Phil and Tony and Michael, and, um, and then um, Phil's son Nicholas is playing drums with them now, who did our, our last tour with Phil. He's an amazing drummer. Um, and he's like 20 now, I think, 19. He was 16 when we started touring with him. Mm -hmm. And Daryl Sturmer will be trading off guitar and bass um, stuff with, with Mike Rutherford. So not, there's no telling where it's going to head after, after that. But I do love sitting there playing all, all these songs. And, you know, all I have to do is go up there and play um, Susudio a couple of times, and my chops are pretty much back up. Um, cause that's really, a, that's really a handful to, uh, yeah. to jump into, wow. um, but you know, I'm trying to stay fresh, but it's been really hard, you know, and trying to keep your calluses up is, is, is a challenge. Um, yeah.
cockpit. I know. I'm not even used to standing up and playing. Like I'm so used to just sitting down in this chair in the studio now. It's like I've just kind of sunken into it. But it's I know it's when we had our first rehearsal with the immediate family. The first thing we all looked at each other and went, holy shit, we're standing up. Yeah. And all of a sudden, <laughs> like my bass was in a different position than it I is. I know, yeah. Your shoulder, every, your, your geometry is slightly different. It's, and uh, uh -huh. we all kind of like the next day, it was kind of like, is your back okay feeling okay? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. It's, it's, who would have ever thought that that would become part of your vocabulary as you know. being concerned about you know, you're standing up or sitting down playing. I mean, it's so Absolutely. funny. It's great. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that because that was really funny for me too. Yes, mm -hmm. I know the guitar felt so far away the other day. Yeah, I was. I did one one live show just a couple of weeks ago in Boston, and yeah, it was really a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was thinking. Uh, I also had to wear shoes. That was another problem. I oh, was like, Jesus. oh my god, the shoes. This is what what do I do here? Um, <laughs> I was thinking we should probably talk about our giveaway a little bit because Mike should. is here Indeed. and we are all such big fans of Cordial. So every week, Leland, we've been so fortunate to be able to give a cable away to one of our oh. lucky audience members and a T-shirt as well. And the folks at Cordial have been so incredibly supportive of this show and just of us in general so really thank you mike that, we mike. love love your cables obviously all three of us are big fans and i know so many people have been turned on to them through this so that that makes us happy in fact mike i'm going to call you after the show we need a couple more just <laughs> yeah to let we you need know. more <laughs> Yeah, and, and Lee, and we, we always give one to our guests but in this case lee you've got you've got plenty right I've, I've got what I need and all that. And I was told that that you were giving this base away, too. Well, we thought about it, but we thought we'd ask your permission first. Um, OK. <laughs> For a price. So so what we're going to do, folks, and some have already put their numbers in because, you know, the deal. But we picked a deal. number before the show. We picked a number between one and 100. And Brandon is keeping an eye on the numbers coming in and we will announce the winner in a couple minutes. So put your put your guesses in, in any of the chats that you are watching on, and we can see all of them at once because we have that power. And Brandon, okay. Jack Rickenbach wanted to that. know. Go ahead, sorry. I was, I was Go gonna ahead. say, uh, Jack, Jack Rickenbach wanted to know what the Zoom code was to, he wants to get into the Zoom. Oh, sorry. yeah. Go well, ahead. I see all these numbers coming in, that's great. Yep, excellent. So the, the cable that they're giving away, it's it's three inches long. It's that one where you it's, stand uh, right next well, to that's, that's, yeah. that's the long one. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, it's, it's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can actually choose a mic cable or an instrument or cable an instrument in this case. Cable, yeah. Oh, cool. 20 foot or 10 foot. Yeah. No, they're great. Right they're angle great. I love the cables. Wow, lots of guesses tonight. We've got it. I got to say, Leland, we've, we've got a big crowd tonight. There's like over 150 people watching, so. Thanks for oh, thanks for wonderful. those who are here to see Leland. We're very happy you're here. They, I probably owe them money and they're here to collect. <laughs> and we have just one more episode of this show next week. We should mention That's this right. is the second to last and our last and 40th, if I counted correctly. I may have, Brandon and I were arguing about how many actually episodes there have been. So <laughs> I should probably go back and count. Who's but I'm going to say 40 because 40 sounds really good. Our 40th and final episode is next Wednesday with Mary Gaucher and Jamie Harris. Oh, great. And then we're, yeah. then that's- Now, is this a hiatus, basically? Or do you think he'll come back and do this again? We don't, we don't, we don't know, honestly. Okay. I mean, it's it, it's so much fun, but it's, it's also really a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, it, it's special because it's, I mean, originally it was like, how can we continue to do what we do and can get ourselves out there? And we thought, well, let's bring in a special guest so it's not just about us all the time. And that's turned into a whole different thing. But it's, as as you can experience, Lee and all the other, all our friends can experience. It's it's way more. And it's not even an interview. It's musician on musician interview. So you you tend to ask different kinds of questions. It's a different kind of camaraderie. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's been really interesting. We might go back to it at some we point. We might do we'll maybe one, one, one a month. We might have some special hey, shows. Hey, maybe we'll do one in person sometime and 
you in that would LA, be great. and you could come out and we could all play together that that's really my dream yeah, for it is to is to fabulous. like stream it from a club sometime where we can actually be together and yeah. not have it be the remote thing anymore because it's I'm just, I just can't wait to, to play in the room with other musicians and, you know, that's, yeah. that's what we've all been missing is yeah, that, I mean, that if, energy, you know, if, to have if, your if, band. That's so great that you've had that because I know yeah. a lot of people have, like we've had each other. Some musicians have been so isolated this time. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's and, devastating on, on, on a lot of levels yeah. because everything, our whole life has been dedicated to community playing together and, and being, you know, in, in the same room, breathing the same air, and all of a sudden, you know, everybody's living in Zoom and acapella worlds and all this yeah. stuff. Well, I mean, and, all, and, and speaking of breathing the same air, it could kill you. So, yeah, I mean, it's 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 like we went through a wormhole into some weird alternate universe, kind of like like bizarro world in the old Superman comics. You know, it's like this whole other thing has happened to us. But the the the, the critical thing is really surviving all of this and moving forward and there's at least a light at the end of the tunnel that isn't a train coming at you. Exactly. Um, well, I, I, I think that the light, which is really interesting, and it is getting brighter and brighter, uh, yeah. I find a certain excitement, and I can hear it in, in, in you, that just to get back on the road with the immediate family, what we're excited about, we hear a lot of, it's the opening up of America, yeah. and hopefully it, it won't be too soon, and hopefully it won't be too dangerous, yeah. but I mean, there, there, I mean, there's an explosive energy you know, in yeah, the air it's and, uh, it, it can be exciting. What's that? Exciting, but it just has to be smart, also. Yeah, it has to and be I'm, smart. But but within that, I mean, I think it's just going to be pretty and in, pretty incredible year. Yeah. Just the the you know, with that explosive kind of energy, yeah. I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but uh, it's definitely <laughs> definitely on steroids. Yeah. 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 Well, it's been so I mean, nice to hear from folks saying like, "Why don't you come to this town?" You know, just as we've been planning mm -hmm. our tour. Um, you know, and if and it it's actually worked out that a lot of people have gotten in touch with us and we've been able to set up house concerts or other shows in their town. And and if there are more folks, you know, there's it's possible we could make a couple more things work on our way back west. But it's just been really fun. Like there's so much enthusiasm from from the audience too, from you guys yeah. just being like, I'll drive to wherever, like just yeah. you know, get yeah. me well, out it's there. Jumping at the bit. To, to go through oh, live music and and Where, where's that. where's your tour the immediate family tour where's that going to go um as of right now the stuff that, that they're putting together i think is going to be uh late october will be some west west coast gigs like the libero um probably canyon club gigs like that um, um they're, they're talking about a bunch of things and then uh we're going to do a, a, a west, an east coast run at the beginning of november but i haven't got any of the dates in front of me yet um, so, you know, there's, you know, a lot of things looming. Um, there's, you know, everybody's, you know, anxious to get out and get to work. For me, the challenge that's going to be kind of exciting about it is when I started my YouTube thing, which was really a total accident. I never thought I was starting a YouTube channel, but I've got, I think, about 580 videos up now on it. I've had one up every day, at least one a day, every single day since March of last year. Mm. And I'm going to take that on the road with me. And um, so I'm, I'm still determined to get a, a video out every day and do the live streams. And it was great. We did a live stream yesterday, but the one two weeks ago, I did it from the studio. So the guys came on and Nico Bolas came on and talked, you know, technical miking things with people that were interested in that and stuff. So um, I, I've really enjoyed this so much that I really don't want it to end at all and for me. So I'm going to just keep, uh, you know, just keep plowing away every day. And, and you're going to uh, keep doing post. it on the road, which is nice. Yeah, keep do doing it on the road. You can even do it on the bus or in a hotel room. As long as I got Wi-Fi, I can do it. You know, yeah. so uh, well, you I can hook up to your phone, too. Yeah. I do everything. I mean, I'm, I'm so low tech. It's just ridiculous. I mean, the way I've got my my whole thing set up. Uh, um, it, Rick Beato, who's like one of my favorite guys on YouTube, he came out to LA and he came out to the house and, and I took him upstairs and showed him where I do my stuff from. And he just started laughing. He just goes, really? This is how you do all that stuff. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty funky. 
but hey you're making it work folks are enjoying it that's yeah, that's what yeah that's, you're communicating you know and and people can hear you and see you i feel like yeah, it's, and it's all about content it's not about being slick or anything like yeah. that yeah. yeah yeah lee our our friend uh ted spiro say, you know ted spiro yeah. from the mansion he says yeah. hi he's watching he's, right. he's watching he, he wants your media family to come come to the mansion and yeah. do a show we probably level the place <laughs> when, when i played there with judith owen it's it's perfect um yeah, it's, uh, yeah it's, well that's what's nice about it about a duo you can do things yeah. like that and house kind of it's what we we love doing you can it's definitely the whole pared down thing yeah. but i love to say i was going to say to ted and to you guys we're going to do a, a fundraiser at the mansion alice and me we're going to have a couple other people there and I'm wondering, I'm just throwing this out there, but maybe you guys could, because I know you you respect the mansion, you've been there and, you know, they could use a little bit of financial help. I wonder if, uh, and I'll talk to Steve about it, but I wonder if you guys might be willing to perhaps just zoom in, you know, for a tune or something to help raise some money. Well, absolutely. Let's let's see what we can do. I, I you know, I, I, I'm happy to, to be able to be of, of help on any level that comes along and I, i've always enjoyed staying there and doing gigs there they their their hospitality is is as good as it gets and um yes. so anything that might be able to possibly do to help out i'm happy to do that oh, fantastic great. we'll we'll, Thanks, we'll talk about that yeah, we'll, we'll we're see. putting something together we're putting together we, we haven't even talked to ted yet hey ted, ted we're putting something we're together to <laughs> <laughs> we have some ideas and rick just so you know the mansion on o street is in washington dc yeah, I was asking. Yeah, so I'm thinking we've you know got a few more minutes here. Do we want to do some more music? Should I? I think you should play, play a song, song so I could play. A I'd love to hear you. Okay, shall I? What should I do? Maybe we can get some uh, a request from one of our fans here. Does anybody have a request of something that I know? One of your <laughs> songs. Ah. Anybody have any requests? A song of Alice's? Freebird. <laughs> Ooh. All right, yeah, that's, that's seeing, not her song. Just, I'm seeing know. the. Did you say free bow or no, free bird? Yeah, Everybody, that's that's the classic. You know, anybody yeah, wants something, they yell free bird. <laughs> it's just like Jesus. Oh my gosh, Don Twilight. is requesting the last. Oh, somebody said Twilight. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna go with that. All right. Uh, that was the verbal communication that got me there. Okay, who said that? Who was that? Where are you? Oh, I have to announce the winner. That was Jack. The winner. Was winner. Thank you for the request, Jack. The winner tonight, drum roll, is Yasi. Yasi, you won the cable tonight. I am so happy. She's dancing. <laughs> See, persistent pays off. You she has been guessing every week. every week. I'm so happy you won tonight. Congratulations. Do you want to say hi? Or are you going to just dance quietly? Oh, thank you so much. I'm so excited. And you thank you for this. so it's welcome. Fantastic. And thanks, Leland, for, for being here. It's great. Oh, it's a it's an absolute pleasure. I'm I'm ha I'm having the time of my life. I'm, I mean, Freebo and I go back, you know, forever, you know, and it's it's just so great to uh, to see you guys doing this. This is yeah. so cool. You know? Well, I never really got to meet you. I don't think Leland. No. Maybe at maybe at Nam very briefly or something like that. I I, I would have memory. At Nam, I would have been in an irreversible coma. I know. Well, I had the I had the honor of actually playing an acoustic set in the drum room, which was uh, oh yeah, that was very very smart. It was organized. unusual. <laughs> no, it was nice to have the visibility. I was happy to do it, but um, it was really loud. <laughs> it was only visible. You could not hear it. <laughs> it was visual. Visual. Only. And it was <laughs> and the irony. The sound people who say it can't be above what a hundred decibel, ninety decibel. They've got drummers clanging and cymbals and everything, and they come to us <laughs> playing acoustic. You got to turn it down. It's yeah. like we can't even hear ourselves. So you hear all the cacophony going on. And we got to on. play. I um, believe Michael Jokum played with us. Michael that, did. That yeah, day. Michael sat in with us. That was fun. That was fun. That's, that's, that's Michael's so good. He's such good people. He I is, love Michael. Is. We're going to be seeing him and, real soon in Denver. And I know you guys uh, definitely share the same political 
perspective. <laughs> you know, we, we both get kicked off of Facebook pretty regular. I've been I've been laying pretty low on there because I'm, I'm waiting for some shit to really hit the fan so I can jump in there. But I've, I've I had a couple of good good death threats lately, so I know I'm still doing the right thing. <laughs> You're still alive and well. Oh my gosh. Let's Check it up. Song. All right, here's the song. We've been we've been talking. <laughs> shade and sunlight gather in pools there are trees to the right twisted and wild to my left is the sea like a glimmering eye well i'm not the first one and i won't be the last who's come to this crossroads and breezed on past with my destination my only concern one foot on the gas as the yellow light weight off my chest but the years stretch before me I admit that it's true this restless pursuit is what I'm called to do and there's nothing like being alone in twilight the ocean and I each approach and hide Better off walking alone. Yeah, I hate to leave being alone at twilight.
Maya. <laughs> so pretty. Thank you, guys. Good mix. Yeah? Yeah, it sounded really good. Really good balance on that. Right. Happy to hear that. It's all we care about is a good mix. Yep. <laughs> that's what we've that's what we spent that's the last year trying to figure out how to do. <laughs> <I'm glad laughs> it's figured out at the end. Mm -hmm. Hey, well, it's it's almost time. What what are you thinking, Freebo, for the, the last few minutes here? Well, I think we should see if uh, there's some uh, some questions. You yeah, know, does anybody, anybody want to say hi uh, from let me like to say hi? We the know there's here. some people out who know you. Lee, I'm guessing you might know Joel Tepp. Do you, do you know Joel Tepp from the old days? Yeah, jump, jump in here. Picture there. There he is. They just took off the what? took off the top hat. Joel Tepp, look at that there. beard. He's got that beard and the mustache. My some God. Hands, you're, some hands you're, hands doing, you're doing a Leland Sklar there. He's trying to be oh, like you, man. I think. No, that's, that's nothing to strive for. <laughs> Does anybody want to unmute and say hi? Just maybe one at a time. It's just... Say hello. Well, since Here's you were in my beard, I will I will jump oh, in. There you go. Hey, Joel. Oh, so wonderful to see both of you. And Lee, thanks for just all, all the wonderful stories, as always. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, can you capture a screenshot there? Oh, maybe I should do that. Good idea, Joel. Uh, no, for me, because I just wanted to say hi to Lee. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Do, it, do it at the same time. Hold on. Wait, do it again. Do it again. Everybody do it. Everybody. All ready? right, everybody. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> all right, that's all I have to say. <laughs> that's great, Jill. That is, a, that is a great screenshot. I'm very happy we did yeah. that. <laughs> it's all so silly. It's, it is. Let's have fun, man. It's a time for smiling. You know, it, it is. It is. been enough darkness in this past 14, 15 months. Let's just have some fun. Yes. I have to say, Leland, you make us smile. Yeah. You make us smile. We really appreciate it. Oh, thank you so yeah. much. Every time. We love having you guys. It's been a thrill to have all three of you, all three cordial endorsing artists on tonight. Uh, we really, really enjoyed it and 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 love you guys and, and love having you in the family. So thanks a lot. Congratulations, Yossi. <laughs> yes. That's Hi, it's, it's, it's anybody here. Oh, go ahead, Storm. Hi, Storm. It's Storm from Greenfield, Massachusetts. Ooh, I hear nice. you're having a heat wave. We are having a heat wave. I definitely <laughs> was glad to have cool thoughts coming from the vibes here because they're not outside my door. Oh, my wow. goodness. Cool. And we keep, it was weird. We were supposed to get a thunderstorm last night, and literally it was like the rain was in the sky but it wasn't making it to the ground. Oh, goodness. <laughs> um, but anyways, I've heard people mention the clubhouse and I've heard people mention YouTube live streaming, but I haven't heard any times for either. So I'm wondering when you are actually- you, Are you talking about my, my situation? Yeah. Yeah, um, what it is is if, if you go to my channel on YouTube, Yeah. Um, there's a link on every video to a to the clubhouse and okay it's like 10 bucks a month for the live streams and everything and you just you just sign up on that and okay. then what I'll, I'll announce like when the live streams are it's usually on a tuesday or a wednesday every other week and um and we end up just depending on how things go for two two and a half hours but it is a fabulous community of characters on that. I, I, I so enjoy it. And then once a month, I do one-on-one um, -on -one Skype or FaceTimes with people. And I do that all day on a Saturday. And it's usually about 18 or 20 people by the end of the day that I've hung out and talked with. And, and it's, it, we've really gotten to be really you know, close on this so it's been really fun and in the clubhouse there's i mean i'm, I'm gonna do my qvc moment here and uh, in the clubhouse there's also um uh stuff in there there's t-shirts and and mugs and you know all kinds of paraphernalia in there and uh beard grooming kits you know that we can <laughs> <laughs> I, I think but, joel tepp is in line to get one i think storm yeah. is too i storm feel like he, we're really well, having yeah. a it's a mighty handsome grouping we've got. You've got. Mm. Don's um, getting a little thing going there, Don Clune. Yeah, yeah. Mm. 
the thing that was crazy was looking at the the weather report though the other night and just seeing what like the northeast was like roasting seeing us like 105 in north dakota while we are still in the 70s here in la and yeah. just going, man you just don't yeah. think but but there's no climate issues it's fine it's no no, no, no it's a hoax yeah, yeah. absolutely <laughs> uh i don't know if i'm muted or not brian Brandon? Yeah, it's money. like they've messed up the weather station because I looked on what the weather was a little while ago and there was a heat index warning at the same time it was saying it was 57 degrees, which it obviously <laughs> is not today. So. No. The real problem is the weather people don't have windows in their offices. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Stick your head out and go, shit, it's hot. Shut it. And that's it. Well, I, I looked at the weather app on my phone and uh, I saw uh, for us here in, in Southern California, next Wednesday is supposed to be 99 degrees. Oh, and, we, we've uh, been so reduced to talking yeah. about the weather on Inside yeah. Live. Oh, oh man. man. Is that what it's come down yeah. to? God, this is it. superficial. Oh, my it's God. That or back pain or you know, incontinence. Or, you know, I, mean, I, I wanted to ask my friend John Callahan, who's on there. Hi, John at Log Logistics Group. How you doing, buddy? Good for you. Uh, John, John was, uh, went out with Tony Bennett. For, well, not, not as a date. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Tony's, Tony's married and so is John. But, but he, was, he was Tony's tour manager for a long time. And uh, I was wondering, I saw a little thing in the uh, Celebrity Theater where it, it talked about him possibly coming back, but I had also got the impression Tony wasn't touring anymore. Could you fill us in on that? Yeah, well, Tony's going to be 95 on August 3rd. And uh, we have a little something special coming up. I really can't announce it yet, but we're going to be doing something in New York sometime around the first week of August. Wow. With a couple of special guests at a highly respected Great. venue, as they say. Mm -hmm. so, I can only imagine. Yeah, so let your memory, you know, let your your mind wander on that one, but it's going to be announced very, very shortly. Great. <laughs> that's, that's terrific. Yeah, 95th, 95th birthday celebration for Tony Bennett. So I think oh, I think that's, that's where it's headed. But uh, uh, Lee, while I have you for a second, were you going out to promote any of the Kate stuff? Yeah, I'm going out with Peter uh, Asher and, and Kate. Uh, we'll be out from the 24th of July to the 4th of August, I believe. And I think it's mostly East Coast um, where they're doing it. And they're, we're going to do it like three days out on the vineyard and Cape right. Cod. Okay, I gotta, I got to talk to Kate tomorrow about that because I want to try to hook up with one of those shows. Oh, okay. That would that would be great. Also, man, I saw Tony's show at the Hollywood Bowl. Um, oh, yeah. Billy Stritch is a really good friend. And, the one uh, with was was Gaga. Did she Gaga. make the special appearance? Yeah, when Gaga came and sang with him. Yeah, and Tony's just it's it's like the Energizer Bunny. It's just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I mean, I, I've watched him for eight years, and as he's gotten older, it's an amazing thing what a live performance will do to an artist. He's off stage, you know. He's his age. Yeah. And once the curtain goes and the spotlight hits him. He's 20 years younger, and it's amazing what the adrenaline rush will do to an artist. It's just, uh, I saw hundreds and hundreds of shows with him, and it's, it's, he's, he's, he's a legend. There's no, no question. It's an elixir. I remember being on the road, and uh, we were doing a gig in Vigo, Spain, and yep. uh, on the bill was Tito Puente's big band with Celia Cruz. Oh and geez, yeah. I see them. Her her trailer opens up, and this feeble old lady is helped out by two guys. They get her to the stage. The light hits her. She was twenty years old. She tore it up for like an hour on stage. Yep. Walked off and folded back up. But yep. that, that hour on stage is the most magical thing one can experience. And when you see the old artists like that, Char I saw Charles Aznavour at the Greek Theater celebrating oh, yeah. his ninetieth birthday. And wow. he was on all original keys, dancing all over the wow, stage. Wow, geez, yeah. Like, Holy crap, you know. Yeah, you know, it was yep. the same thing. Same thing I back hope Tony's in the day okay. with, That'd be fabulous. Same, back, same thing back in the day with Bonnie Raitt with Sippy Wallace. And oh. Sippy had, Sippy oh, yeah, had, Sippy, yeah, had Sippy, a stroke. Sure. And, and Bonnie had Sippy open up quite a few shows. And, and it would I mean, she, she, 
she had her nephew helping her and she had a cane. She could hurt it. But once on stage, she start meet, you see the mo- the movement, she start to mm-hmm. rock, she'd start to joke around, she'd sing the, and and then the same thing after the adrenaline yep. wears off goes back to being it it's an amazing thing. It is amazing. Yeah. I mean Tony is I mean, I keep saying it. My idol is Tony Bennett. I want to be like Tony Bennett. I want to be 90 years old and still singing and still playing. And I don't care what I'm like off the stage, but so wheel me on the stage. Let me do my thing. I'll do my vocal exercises. I'll do some sort of physicality. But uh, I mean, well, he'll, he'll be 95 on August 3rd. So that's amazing. That's, that's we, we, got, we got a long road to go. If you that's amazing. Not as long Good as you might you, think. John. Yeah, hey, great, <laughs> a quick Tony Bennett story. This is Tommy. Yeah. Yeah. So my father grew up in Corona and Elmont and I don't know, the early forties, he used to pick up Tony Bennett on Friday night. My friends, my father's friend was a singer, Angela, a uh, drummer, Angelo Ferrara. He used to pick him up in Astoria and drive him to the subway. And before he was really famous and then he hadn't seen him in a while in the forties, I think during the war, my father wow. ran across Tony Bennett walking in the city, maybe on Broadway or something. And my father said, whatever, I don't know what he called him, Tony or whatever, I forget. Uh, how you doing? And he said, the music isn't going well. I may have to just do my art. He told my father that. And it was there you go. Someone, was it Frank Sinatra or someone that helped him get famous? Well, I mean, Frank always said that Tony was his fa- his favorite singer. Yeah. And I think it was Bob Hope that actually gave him his name. That was what I heard. Yep. It was that Bob. Was- yeah. Bob gave Tony. It was he was out there as Joe Barry. And he said, yes, uh, yep. what, what's your real name? Uh, Anthony Benedetto. You, you're now Tony Bennett. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> that's what my father said. Who named him? Bob Hope? Yeah, it's Bob Hope. Yeah, that's wow. what my father told me. Yeah, because my father was into music. He didn't play, but he loved music. And I guess the swing area, uh, era or whatever. Yeah, my yeah. father is, it probably would have been the same age as Tony. I think he was born in around 25 or something. 22. Yeah. No, no, tw- wow. he was 26. Tw- wow. Yeah, my father was... 95 and 21, yeah. Good for yeah. him. That's really Nobody exciting. said there would be math involved. No, yeah, forget it. I know, <laughs> well, yeah, I get it. Too, too late. In the weather. Anyway, Freebo, I hope to see you and Alice somewhere on the East Coast at some point. Yeah. Well, well, I hope so, too. That'd be great. And I was going to say to both you guys, uh, <laughs> I, not Alice, but I'm going to be on the vineyard actually doing a show or two of my I'm own. I think the, 20, the 30th, the 31st of July and the 1st and 2nd, it's that weekend. Do you know when your shows are with Kate? I think the, the last shows of the, of our run are are there. So we might be there at the same time. Oh, my gosh. Wow. I'd love to come. I hope it's not oh, the same it'd be great. one of my shows, damn it. Damn. Can I, can I open for you guys? Oh, man. I, well, we could at least cuddle. <laughs> no, I've actually got a band, some really good music. I'll be stuck in the York at rehearsals. I'm so sorry. Oh, man. But I'll be on the vineyard in, in August. I'm... I'm a guest DJ on MVY. Oh, <laughs> cool. do you know Great. when that's going to be? Cool. I don't know when it's going to air. I'm, I'm going to tape it with uh, with Amy Vanderman. I got two hours of guest DJ slots. I'm going to do my whole career. Every artist I've worked with, I'm doing a song and a little tidbit of touring. Should be interesting. Right. Which body <laughs> song are you going to play? Um, I think Angel. Oh, cool. Great. Cool. Angel from Excellent. Montgomery. Excellent. Cool. Yeah. Wow. Hey, Lee. Anyway, <laughs> great talking to you guys. Safe Thanks, travel. I'm glad it's opening up again, finally, yeah. after mm-hmm. way too long of a respite. And uh, Indeed. travel safe, and uh, we'll see you. you down the road. Thank All you. Right? We look forward to that, John. Should be great. Right. Hey, hey Lee, Kelly, yeah. say, say hello to Ted Spiro on there. Hey, Ted. How are you? Jump in here. Hey, Ted. Somebody unmute Ted. Ted, unmute yourself. How are you doing? There you go. Hey, Ted. Hey, hey strangers. Hi. Can't Good wait to see you. you. Oh, hey, Ted. Hey, Lee. How Can't you wait, too. We're going to call you. Miss you guys. Can't wait for the next We Write the Songs on the Hill. 
I know. I, I was talking to Chris Caswell, you know, and, you know, we're just hoping that the, you know, next year we'll be back in the saddle there again at the Library of Congress, because that's one of my favorite gigs. I was talking to Omar Hakim, too, and we were both going, go, we miss that show. So here, here, here's hoping. You never know who's going to show up to that. Yeah, well, well we actually do, because we yeah, have to be there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cool gig, though. I love doing that that gig. And, you know, we're with Paul, you know, so. Yeah. Paul, we've, I actually, uh, H and I went to visit him a few times during COVID in, uh, in uh, Taos, New Mexico. Uh, you know, when Mentor passed away, he gave him the house in Taos. It's called um, the Driftaway Lodge. Oh, wow. So we went up there for his 80th birthday and 30 years sober. And that was wow. a, a real treat. We'll see that's great you know it's paul williams we're talking about mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. yes that's great yeah but we're, we're really looking forward to alice and free boat back at the mansion uh, next month where it we'll get to see him in person and everything yes that's right that's right that'd, that'd be, be wonderful. wonderful that'd be we're, great we're gonna have to it's wear a mask perfect, perfect setting for you guys we love the mansion no we love the mansion we played there several times and yeah. uh Raise a couple bucks. Hopefully, we can raise a little bit more this time. A couple more each time. That's a good thing. It means a lot. Oh, Thank yeah. you, guys. Great to see you. Of course. Great oh, to, see to see you, too. too Ted. Well, you guys, it's been another lovely Wednesday evening. Mm -hmm. I think it's. Mm -hmm. Time to say goodbye and Leland, thank you so much for being here with us. This was I, such a treat. Invite. I really appreciate it and I really enjoyed this. And uh, you guys, you're great. I mean, I, I hope we can cross paths on the road. It'd be really fun. Oh, uh, we that will. Hey, hey, if 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 we do, uh, maybe uh, when out one of Alice's songs, I can switch to guitar and you can play bass, huh? Whatever you want, you're my hero. What? <laughs> this is gonna be good. Maybe we could do. Could we do tuba and bass? I don't know. Tuba, because I, I don't know about the two bass thing. It doesn't, doesn't usually work out very well. <laughs> yeah, it's it takes a little foresight to. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, so <laughs> One acoustic guitar and two basses sounds yeah, like. That's, that's <laughs> not, it's it's it's. It's ganging up. Yes, it's, it's, it's bullying. Is what it it's is. It's bullying. It's bullying. <laughs> that's when. That's when. That's when the egos hit. Yep. <laughs> well, Leland, thank you. You're you're such a, a pleasure to speak with and to hear your stories is just wonderful. So I know everybody's enjoyed it so much, and a couple people are flipping you off right now with love. <laughs> with love. <laughs> yeah, they're the best. They're the best out there. What are, you, you've you've got just a bunch of maniacs out there. It's it's great. Uh -huh. They're good people. Well, we like them. We'll keep them. We do. We love our maniacs, as, as I'm sure you love yours. Absolutely. Yes. All right, everybody. We'll see you for the last episode next last week. Last episode next week. Wow. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. And oh, if, if, I'm gonna an, cry. If, if any of you are not on, let's say my email list, please email me freebo at freebomusic.com. I guess yeah. you are. But or uh, check that, out um, all the list of shows are on my website, alicehow.com. They're right there on the homepage. So I'm continuously updating that. Freebo has yet to update his website, but you um, can, um, currently um, you can look at mine. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to. But also, uh, if you, we've done 40 of these shows now, and uh, there's some wonderful conversations, some some seriously memorable moments, and uh, they are all archived, particularly right. on Alice's YouTube channel. Uh, people like Chris Smither, Tom Paxton. Uh, I mean, gosh, who are some of the other people we had? Oh, Rory Block, Rory we've had Block. Holly Near, we've had Amy Spies, a lot of great younger artists that Ellis Paul, Vance Gilbert, we've had Albert, Albert Lee. Like, yeah, just it's been wonderful. So no yeah, topo check, check, check. what's that? No Topo Gigio. No. Okay. You don't remember no. Topo Gigio? <laughs> no. Help. <laughs> Help. Is that like Oingo Boingo? No, no, it was it was a little Italian mouse on Ed Sullivan puppet. Ed. Okay, I'm sorry I interrupted there. <laughs> no, I I I I, sh I used to watch Gigio. Ed Sullivan all the time. I, I how come I don't that. know that? Oh, well, that's, that's why they invented my time. Google. I know. I I gotta know. 
Well, I think I think there was some recognition oh, yeah. here on the screen, as you said. <laughs> Scarlett Rivera, we had Scarlett on. That was yep. fun. Yep. Yeah. Well, everybody, thank you. Nice to see you, Deb. Thanks for coming. Yeah, <laughs> nice thank you. you, everybody. Really appreciate you joining us. Thank you. We see you. Bye. We love you. Thank you so much. Being here. We'll see you love next you week, all. okay? Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Congratulations, Yossi. Yeah. Thanks, Lee. Good night. Thanks, Lee.